Today we have a super packed day in Gisborne. We are surfing in the morning, museuming in the afternoon, and beer tasting on the evening. Previously on day 270 part 1, we met up with Frank which is a legend in the Gisborne area and he took the time to teach us all about surfing. It was an intense competition between Laura and I to who is going to be able to stand the longest on the board. She won and now the continuation of day 270. Next up in our Gisborne travel itinerary is the Tyra Fitty Museum, which is the regional museum for the Gisborne area. In fact, Tyra Fitty is the Maori name for this region. And the good thing is that we arrive right on time for the guided tour. So we are meeting the museum creator that is going to take the time to show us some of the most amazing artifacts that the museum hosts. The Gisborne region is rich in Maori history and that's why many of the artifacts in the Tyra Fiti Museum are from the Maori culture which is really fascinating to look at. For instance we have a look at this paddle which was an original paddle traded between the Maori and the British Captain James Cook during that first encounter on land. The rest of those paddles can be found in museums actually all over the world. But for us now, we are moving into a temporary exhibition of art and different pottery, as well as seeing some old photographs of Gisborne. So yeah. the museum is here just kind of yeah. behind those trees. Uh, and that's Gladstone Road running through there and the Wainui Bridge being built. The next exhibition that we're going to be checking out is an exhibition from a local iwi, which is a Maori tribe. And pardon me for the pronunciation, but the name of the exhibition is Korongo Fakata. I'm pretty sure I butchered that name, but the exhibition is absolutely amazing. There is heaps of Maori artifacts. There is even some fences which were from Parasite, which were the fortified Maori village back in the days. There is also a big part of the exhibition dedicated to Te Kuiti, which is a local Maori chief that did hide from the law enforcement around the Gisborne region for quite a long time. But moving on to the rest of the exhibition of the museum, the next place that we're going to be spending time in is the Te Moana exhibition, which is all about the sea. As a coastal city, Gisborne has a huge relationship with the water. So there's loads of artifacts here, both Maori and European, such as a cutaway ocean-going waka, and waka is the Maori word for canoe, as well as fishing hooks, fishing nets. And we also see a little diagram of that first encounter between the British and the Maori on land. And for the next exhibition, we are staying on theme. That's only fitting that we're spending some time in the surf section of the museum since we've been surfing this morning and Laura and I are both exhausted from surfing this morning. At least Frank didn't make us surf on that. Ah, oh, that's a picture of Frank. Nice, nice, another old guy. Believe it or not, the Tafiti Museum is a small provincial museum, but there is so much to see. So we are already moving on to the next exhibition. This one is the Star of Canada, which was a massive vessel. The story behind the Star of Canada is that the ship wrecked off the coast of Gisborne and was helped by the local and obviously they gather quite a few of the parts of it so it can be enjoyed as an exhibition. But moving on, there's really a lot here. We are checking a more modern collection. It's a lot of local art and basically it's a lot of modern twist onto Maori classics. But believe it or not, we are already moving on to the next exhibition. Yes, there is that much to see in this tiny museum. It's so cool. This next exhibition is the Wiley House, which is basically one of the first examples of European style houses in Gisborne. This is a great way to get an insight on how people used to live back in the days here in New Zealand. And the first thing that I noticed is how small they were. Every single ceiling and doorway is actually much smaller than our current average. And that's because back in the days people were a little bit shorter. And speaking of short, we are now moving on to the Sunshine Brewery where we meet one of the shortest brewers in the country. Uh, Robin, I don't think you can say that. Our guide is actually super knowledgeable and he's showing us the behind the scenes of the Sunshine Brewery, going through the brewing process in a really sort of casual, non-rehearsed way, which is really cool. And then after we've done a little bit of a brewery tour, we are moving next door to the tap room so we can start trying some of that delicious beer. 
As you all know, the highlight of any brewery tour is the tasters at the end. So we're heading over to the tap room where we realize we are getting some very, very generous tasters, about a quarter of a pint for each taster. And we're getting two trays each, that's 10 beers in total out of the 18 that they serve here at the Sunshine Brewery. The team here take the time to go through all the different beers we're trying as well as giving us a little bit of paper with taster notes on which are hilariously written and incredibly accurate. As per every single beer tasting ever, we obviously have our favorites. I really like the Tex-Mex, which is kind of a Mexican inspired beer. It's like a Corona but without having to put the lime in it. It's pretty awesome and it was an awesome day. Electron IPA Indian Pay Lane. Futuristic Gizborn. That's the description. Futuristic. Should be coming as a pill and just eat it in its beer. That would yeah. be futuristic. That would be futuristic. That is futuristic. Yes, I would describe that as futuristic too. That's actually brilliant. 